Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The 2021 Rock and Roll Running Series is happening today with the half marathon and marathon bringing thousands of runners to the starting line. Details on this event coming up next. Fatal crash this morning claims the life of a man traveling on a local highway. The details straight ahead. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City. Ooh, big question for so many runners this morning. What is the weather going to look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Sunday, December 5th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Did you have any problems getting to work today? I didn't, but I heard you went on a it, little adventure. It is an obstacle course. Thank you to SAPD who let me through to get into the station. <laughs> but guys, this morning, if you're out and about, make sure to be wary of those uh, those barricades those blocking road off road closures. Road closures. All of Broadway oh, yeah. is pretty much closed. Yeah, a lot point. of closures uh, in the downtown area. Of course, we have all that exact information on KSAT.com, but it is going to be very humid for anybody running the half or the full marathon today. Outside right now, it's 60 degrees cloudy and there are some areas of mist and some fog visibility reduced slightly around the metro area but we're not seeing any dense fog in areas except for out near Gonzales where visibility is down to about half a mile now looking at the forecast for the Humana Rock and Roll Marathon race begins at 715 and around that time we will have patchy fog cloudy skies temperatures will be in the upper 60s will be warming up uh, by noon to 74 so it's going to be warm and humid for the marathon itself. Now today's afternoon high temperatures will be in the upper 70s around San Antonio in the 80s uh, south of San Antonio toward Catula Pleasanton temperatures will be well into the 80s. Now coming up in the forecast though we've got a cold front arriving tomorrow. I'll tell you how that'll change our weather and drop our temperatures in just a few minutes. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man is dead after losing control of his vehicle and crashing. Police say the man was traveling southbound on Loop 1604 near Nacogdoches when he lost control of his vehicle and slammed into a guardrail. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Officers say speed was a factor. And this morning, San Antonio police investigating a deadly shooting at a car wash near the Ingram Park Mall. The shooting happened around 9 last night. Police on the scene telling us the victim shot in the leg taken to University Hospital. That is where he later died. Police say the shooter took off after the gunfire, but he was later arrested. We are expecting to learn the name of the suspect and the victim, so make sure to stay with us on air and online as this information becomes available. The Bear County Sheriff's Office is trying to determine the identity of skeletal remains discovered by a rancher in Atascosa. The discovery was made yesterday afternoon. Sheriff Javier Salazar says the remains may have been out there for months. In the next few days, photos will be released to the public showing clothing found near the body to see if any family will be able to identify it. Salazar th says thanks to animals in the area, the crime scene is expansive. We did find uh, different different body parts, different different parts of human remains uh, scattered, shoot upwards, uh, probably 100, 100 yards across. Most of the skull and teeth were recovered, so deputies hope dental records can help identi identify the person. BCSO is asking anyone who lives in this area who might have seen a suspicious car or person to give them a call. Well, a big update on the search for a man missing at Canyon Lake throughout this week. Divers have recovered his body. The body of 47 year old Stephen Johnson of Wimberley pulled from the lake just yesterday. Johnson last seen just before noon on Wednesday walking into the lake. He never resurfaced. His body found along the shoreline near boat ramp 17. Deputies right now investigating this as a drowning. Well, back here at home, the 2021 Humana Rock and Roll Running Series full swing throughout the weekend. Thousands and thousands of runner taking to the pavement. We have the half marathon and the full marathon all taking place downtown. The event is back in San Antonio after a two year hiatus caused by the pandemic. Our Jonathan Cotto has been covering the race all weekend. Now he joins us live from the starting line. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max. That's right. I'm here at the starting line on Market and Presa, right in front of the Briscoe Museum, where it's all going to be taking place. Thousands of runners lining up for their opportunity to qualify for the Boston Marathon. This is the qualifier for that Boston Marathon. So it's, it's kind of a big deal. But right now this morning, right before the start, which is uh, scheduled to start at 7.15, last minute preparations for this race taking place. Let's take a look at what those pre preparations are looking like here. We have this gentleman here on this rig putting up the setups over this Humana Rock and Roll running series arch. 
which is beautiful. It looks great. You can already starting to feel the, the energy, the excitement of what is going to be taking place here this morning. Of course, that half marathon and marathon launching off at 7.15 here just in a couple of hours. Now, it's important to note there's a lot of safety measures put in place. We spoke with directors who say that all the safety measures uh, at, at, this, at this event is typical of a marathon. Um, they told us that the start is going to take place, it's going to be a, a wave start, meaning the runners are going to be taken off in waves to kind of just adhere to social distancing guidelines and uh, that's what it's going to look like this morning but of course we're going to bring you more details and max you noted uh the road closures it's important to mention those over 60 roads are expected to be closed this morning but of course for more information on those road closures you can head on over to ksat.com we'll check back in with you in the next half hour max sarah Thank you, Jonathan. Now to the latest in the pandemic, the number of Omicron variant cases growing throughout the country. More and more states issuing warnings about the virus, even though those respective states haven't had any confirmed cases. Health officials are continuing to push vaccinations as the response to ending COVID-19. ABC's Karina Mitchell has more. More states are detecting cases of the COVID-19 Omicron variant. Washington state is confirming three cases in two men and one woman ages 20 to 39. And New York state is confirming three new cases, bringing the state's total to eight. Even states with no confirmed cases are issuing warnings. It shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that it could possibly be in Oklahoma already. Omicron was first detected in Southern Africa, and one study there shows Omicron is spreading there twice as fast as the Delta variant. A few weeks ago, it's South Africa, they were at about 200 to 300 cases a day. Now they're over 15,000. Despite the many unknowns about Omicron, health officials stress that the best defense against it and other variants is still vaccination. And in the past few days, more and more Americans have been lining up to get either their first shot or a booster. At Lompoc Valley Medical Center in California, two months ago, workers say about 50 people would come in for a vaccine. On Friday, the medical center had more than 400 vaccine appointments. And so now that there is, you know, an impending new variant that we don't know a lot about yet, um, I can see why people are interested in getting vaccinated for sure. The science on this one's clear. The vaccines do help keep people from getting very sick from this virus, and the boosters provide an extra layer of protection. 22 states have seen an uptake of about 10 percent or more in hospital admissions over the past week, according to officials. Delta continues to drive cases across the country, especially in those who are unvaccinated. Nearly Nearly 60,000 Americans are now hospitalized with COVID-19. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. In your morning headlines, the Mesquite police officer killed in the line of duty on Friday has been identified. He is Richard Lee Houston II. Houston was a 21-year veteran of the Mesquite Police Department. He was shot in the chest during a traffic stop. The department's chief was at Houston's side until he passed. Houston was a husband and a father of three children. Well, the city of Honolulu being forced to shut down its largest water source in Oahu because of, get this, contamination from a Navy well. Petroleum chemicals detected in the drinking water at Joint Pearl Harbor Hickman Air Force Base last weekend, now forcing officials to shut down water pumps. There's a concern that contamination could have spread to the largest source of drinkable water on the entire island. The Hawaii congressional delegation demanding the Navy immediately identify, isolate, and fix the problem. Well, there's a lot of anticipation building as President Joe Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin are set to speak in a video conference on Tuesday. No word on how long the meeting will last. The talks come as tensions escalate between the U.S. and Russia over a Russian troop buildup on the Ukrainian border. Nearly 100,000 Russian soldiers are said to be on the border of Ukraine in a statement from the White House. The president will stress concerns about Russia's increased military activities and reaffirm the U.S.'s support for Ukraine. Time now just about 6.09, 68 degrees out. After finding thousands in stolen money at a Lakewood church, the plumber says he thinks he should get a reward. Straight ahead, find out if he's entitled to one. Go Spurs. Go. Woo, go Spurs. What a win last night. We're going to have all the highlights coming up. Plus, look at those jerseys. Pretty cool. All right, 68 degrees at 6.09 this morning. Weather playing a big factor in today's race events. Sarah Spivey will let us know what we can anticipate when we come back. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy Sunday, 6.12 this morning. And the big question, 
what are the runners going to expect today? Yeah, Sarah, on my drive in, I had the teeniest bit of mist on my yeah. windshield, but it didn't seem like a big deal at all. Well, you know, it's not a major deal, but I bet you all that humidity feels like a major <laughs> deal to anyone <laughs> running a half or a full marathon out there. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look outside right now. Cloudy skies, and we really are not seeing visibility limited by too much. Visibility it's still good at 10 miles, but elsewhere we do have lower uh, visibility and some from some fog and some mist. And one of the reasons why visibility is not all that bad uh, right now is because we've got a steady wind from the southeast at about 10 miles per hour mixing up the air for us. 68 degrees and it is very humid out there. 68 in New Braunfels, 68 in Canyon Lake, 64 in Kerrville, 68 in Hondo, 71 right now. It's Stinson already starting off at 70 degrees. You can see that visibility is worse out toward Gonzales down to half a mile and then limited visibility off to the west in some areas like Castroville, Port S.A., Hondo and Kerrville. That's again where you could probably see some of that mist. You valley visibility down to four miles. Let's take a look at the high rise future cast a lot like yesterday. We're really only going to see a few peaks of sunshine during the day today. It'll be a mainly gray Sunday for us. So looking at today's forecast, we'll call for a few peaks of sunshine and temperatures. If we had more sun, it would be very warm, but it's it's still going to be warm and muggy in the afternoon with a high temperature near 77 degrees. South winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. 80s elsewhere like in Pleasanton, uh, Creza Springs, Catula, upper 70s for Del Rio, low 70s for parts of the hill country. It's going to stay very cloudy for parts of the hill country today. All right, let's take a look at where our front is. It's currently working its way across the central plains. A lot of snowfall for the northern tier of the United States. There's that low pressure system with that cold front behind it. It's in the teens in places uh, in the northern tier of the United States. Now we will, of course, not get that cold, but take a look at what happens with our future cast. Now, tomorrow morning will start off a lot like the last couple of mornings. We're going to have a areas of patchy fog and drizzle. It's going to be very humid and then that front will move through in the mid morning hours. With it, we anticipate a broken line of thunder showers. The chance for rain in San Antonio really is only 20% and as that front moves through, it's going to get windy and it's going to get a lot cooler for the second part of the day. Again, that's going to be arriving in the mid morning hours. Winds will be gusting from the north up to about 35 miles per hour, bringing in that cooler air. So even though we do have a continuation of a chance for some light showers during uh, the rest of the day tomorrow. The biggest thing you'll notice is how windy and how cool it'll get. By the start of Tuesday, we'll be back into the 40s. So tomorrow is going to be a day where you'll start off with short sleeves and then you'll want the jacket in the afternoon. Here's a look at your Monday forecast. Some fog in the morning, 20% chance for isolated shower throughout the day. Winds will turn to the north at 15 to 25, gusting up to 35 miles per hour. Temperatures will be in the 50s tomorrow during the afternoon. So kind of an upside down day where we'll see the high temperature of 70 degrees in the morning hours and then that front uh, will move through and temperatures will fall throughout the day. We'll be waking up at 45 on Tuesday. Highs only in the low 60s Tuesday with uh, again rebounded temperatures by Friday. We'll be at 83 degrees. The record for the day on Friday is 85. We'll be close to record heat on Friday Ooh. before our next cold front moves through Saturday. Mm -mm. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. You know, it was raining. What was raining? The Spurs raining down threes. Look at that. And take a look at these jerseys. The Spurs sport in their City Edition Fiesta uniforms taking on Golden State Warriors last night. Golden State has been cruising. First quarter, Derek White stealing the pass, lay it up, drew the foul, free throw good. Spurs up 13. I Lonnie Walker, the fourth from distance. Spurs go up 17. They would lead 36-21 after the first. Second quarter, San Antonio with the pace. Lonnie Walker making the layup, giving the Spurs the largest lead of the half, 43-21. Yes, Steph Curry did play. I know some people were like, oh, how are they winning with Steph Curry playing? Less than 10, 10 seconds ago, Lonnie Walker steals the ball, bucket, and one free throw good. Spurs led 67-58 at halftime. End of the third quarter, Curry beats the buzzer. Look at that. I mean, how do you even guard someone from that? He's just after half, 99-88 San Antonio after three. Fourth quarter, less than two minutes on the clock. Spurs down by two. Derek White clutch triple off a missed free throw with 33 seconds left. Spurs handle business and get the win. Beating Golden State 112 to 107. Fourth straight win. They are three and one in their Fiesta jerseys. Don't worry, far from done. Like we always say, long season tomorrow night. Spurs close out a three game road trip. 
taking on the Phoenix Suns. Phoenix Suns just lost the Golden State Warriors. All also, right. I don't know if Devin Booker's playing, so go Spurs, go. They call it the City jerseys? Yeah, City Edition. They're doing well in them. They're pretty sweet. No, Sarah Spivey and I say we're saying we want one. Look good, feel good, feel good, play good. There you go. There you go. <laughs> 618, 68 degrees out. Well, take the rhythm and the ride. The Samba Train It's back again. Plus, this is a, a new edition of a story we've been following. I love this story. <laughs> find out why the plumber who helped police find thousands and thousands of dollars in stolen money may not get a reward. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, one, five, two, fireball six, daily four, one, two, six, nine, fireball four. Cash five, 18, 20, 22, 27, 32. Lotto Texas 15, 17, 20, 27, 52, 53. Did you play? I didn't. This is a really big jackpot. Powerball 10, 40, 45, 56, 67, powerball two, power play two. Good morning and welcome back. The plumber who found thousands and thousands of dollars hidden inside the walls at Lakewood Church in Houston thinks he should get a reward. Even though his discovery helped police find the stolen cash, Crime Stopper says he's too late Ooh. to collect the reward that was offered. $600,000 was stolen back in March of 2014. At the time of the theft, Crime Stoppers offered a $25,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. But the plumber just found the money. The statute limitations on this particular felony theft case has expired, meaning the plumber will not get any money. Now that doesn't preclude Lakewood from giving him a reward or um, accommodation from HPD congratulating him on doing the right thing. But unfortunately, Crime Stoppers is out of the picture at that point. If the plumber had not fixed the loose toilet at the church, the money would still be in the walls. And now Houston police say the investigation is ongoing. It is one of the largest breast cancer symposiums in the world, and it is happening right here in San Antonio. It is also where the latest approved treatments are first discussed with the best of the best researchers and physicians in their respective fields. The 2021 San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium happening this Tuesday, December 7th, and that is why later this morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., Dr. Virginia Kaklamani, an oncologist with UT Health San Antonio, she will be joining us live. We're going to be discussing goals for the symposium, new treatments, advancements, and when and how to get checked out. If you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us at 8 a.m. this morning for all the answers. Time now at 623, 68 degrees out. Well, the music train is moving down the track. That story is next. Good morning, welcome back. Samba groups performing on a train filled with passengers in Rio de Janeiro. The Samba Train is an event that celebrates National Samba Day. Mm. The event repeats the same itinerary that the Samba's forefathers did 80 years before. Normally crowds of people squeezed into train carriages, but this year's event happened as the city's mayor canceled the country's famous New Year's Eve party in Copa Cabana Beach due to renewed COVID-19 fears. All right, time now, 627, 68 degrees out. A woman goes to great illegal lengths to keep her mother's social security checks coming. And two brothers grateful this morning after beating the odds and becoming part of a new family. We're gonna explain. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. It is 6.30 this morning, it's Sunday, December 5th. There is so much going on in and around mm -hmm. San Antonio. Yeah, if you're driving around, especially in the downtown area, beware. Like Jonathan Cotto said earlier, over 60 roads are closed this morning because the rock and roll half and marathon are happening, and it's going to kick off in less than 30 minutes or so. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, weather-wise, what should runners know? Well, they're probably already out there getting ready, <laughs> ready yeah. for the race, but it's going to be humid, humid and warm this morning. In fact, we're already above our average high temperature for this time of the year. Our average high temperature is 67 and we're at 68 degrees. Uh, humidity, a few drops of drizzle out there in places and visibility is lower in some spots, not necessarily around the metro area, but especially west of San Antonio. Temperatures this morning in the 60s, 64 in Rock Springs, 64 in Kerrville, 66 in Carrizo Springs, already 70 degrees in Pleasanton to start the day. 68 in Gonzales and in Gonzales, that's where we have some of the densest fog this morning. Visibility down to a quarter of a mile. So today we are going to be warm. 
we'll be looking at high temperatures right near about 77. Uh, but guess what? We're on a temperature roller coaster this week because tomorrow a front arrives and in the afternoon tomorrow we'll be in the 50s. By Tuesday morning, we'll be in the 40s and back up that temperature roller coaster because by the end of the week we'll be looking at high temperatures near uh, about 83 degrees, which is much warmer than seasonably average. We'll talk about that front, whether or not we can expect any rain and how windy it'll get uh, tomorrow coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Sarah. Well, if you are in the downtown area or plan to come this way, a lot of road closures this morning, as we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. I hit multiple barricades, not literally, but I had to, you know, navigate around. <laughs> he had a little race this morning. Oh himself. my <laughs> goodness, it's a little obstacle course. So the Rock and Roll Marathon getting ready to kick off. I believe it starts at 715. That's right. Today is the second day of the race. Our Jonathan Cotto is live at the starting line. Good morning, Jonathan. What's it looking like out there? Good morning, Sarah. Things are starting to kick into gear. You can hear the excitement right behind me. Those runners are already lined up and ready to kick off this half marathon and marathon this morning here in front of the Briscoe Museum where the starting line is located, Presa and Market Street. Now, I was just speaking here with these guys here. They're part of the bike patrol. They're already placing their bets on what the fastest time is going to be. The bike patrol is responsible for following the top five runners this morning. Just take a listen at that crowd right now. They're being briefed. They're lined up. They're getting charged and pumped for this run. Of course, nearly 60 roads along the half and full marathon courses will be closed this morning. And safety is a huge part of planning events like this. Let's speak. Uh, we spoke with one of the organizers. Let's hear what he had to say about the planning process. So we are taking some new precautions. Uh, typically what you would experience at a half marathon or marathon is what we call a wave start. One corral would go off at a time. In the interest of social distancing and spacing, we are doing more of a rolling start. So we'll have, for example, we'll have 10 athletes go off every couple of seconds and it will be monitored and flowed in, um, in a more less, less mass start type capacity. Now, the presence of security is definitely visible out here this morning. Now, the majority of closures will stay in place and will reopen on a rolling basis, according to the Rock and Roll um, Marathon Running Series. And, of course, everyone's already placing their bets. We know right now these gentlemen saying 220. We know that the 2019 winner came in at about an hour and some change. So we're all excited to see who those top five winners will be this morning. Back to you, Max and Sarah. All right, Jonathan Cotto, thank you so much. Well, there are more than 1,200 children in Bear County and the surrounding 27 counties waiting and wanting to be part of a family. They're right now in the middle of an adoption process. And get this, the least adopted group, teenagers. Hmm. David Sears introduces us to a family willing to open their doors and hearts for a second time to two teenage brothers who now have a loving home to share before heading out into the real world on their own. It looks and sounds like just three guys hanging out in the kitchen and talking. It is. It is also one of the newest formed families in San Antonio. But I'm gonna have it Xander is an 18-year-old senior and Levi is a 14-year-old freshman. They're brothers and as of August 20th, they are the proud adopted sons of Jason Edwards and his wife Krista. I'm going to formally grant the adoption. When the judge said it, it's just like finally there it is. There it is. So that was just kind of like more of a satisfying. I had already went through all the emotions that I I was going to be adopted before and it's just like nothing but joy. As soon as she was like you guys are a family now and then we closed the zoom in I was like yes. One reason they feel so much joy relief that they found a home since Xander and Levi are teenagers the chances of being adopted are significantly lower than younger kids. It just felt like we were the rejects you're too old to be wanted now. So yeah, I was just, you know, looking for what can I do when I age up? What, what am I going to go into? Jason and Crystal had already adopted two teenagers several years ago. One now in college, the other working. Doing it again wasn't exactly in their plans, but they didn't hesitate when they were called to foster again in January of 2020. Didn't have any clue anything about them. Didn't know what they looked like. Didn't know anything. Just that they needed a home. When you saw him, what did you think? I was like, he's big, he's huge, and I think I'm going to be kept in check. So I saw him and I was scared because I was like, okay, this dude's huge, he's massive. This is not okay. And I got like, I was really nervous. I saw the mom and I was like, okay, this is fine, you know. Maybe she'll like, she'll protect me whenever he's getting on me. He was big, but with a soft voice. He's always been that way. And now the two boys have their forever home. And even though they are older and time in the home will be shorter, it will always be home.
It's just like, this is my life now, and I, I can't imagine it any other way, and I wouldn't want it any other way. It's just been great. It's just good when you have something so great that you can forget all the bad. Yeah, they're teenage, they're teenage boys at that, um, but they are still have big hearts, and they have dreams, and they have full of love. Not only are these two learning to adapt to adoption at home, but they're also adapting at school. They're making some pretty good grades in AP and dual credit classes. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. Good morning headlines. An arrest has been made in the shooting death of Jacqueline Avant. Now, the philanthropist and wife of music icon Clarence Avant shot and killed in the couple's Beverly Hills home on Wednesday. Now, LAPD officers responding to a burglary call early Friday morning. That's where they found 29-year-old Ariel Maynor in the backyard of a home. Officers say that Maynor had shot himself in the foot. Now, Maynor now identified as a suspect in the shooting and killing of Avon. Investigators say multiple surveillance videos showed the suspect's vehicle leaving the Avon's neighborhood after the shooting. Authorities not yet establishing a motive. Police in New Hampshire say a woman kept her mother's corpse in her home for months so she could continue to receive her social security checks. The 54 year old was arrested in November. Officers initially came to the home at the end of October for a well being check after relatives reported not seeing her mother for months. Police say officers attempted to follow up, but the woman's daughter refused to let them in. They returned with a search warrant and found the mother's body. Investigators believe the mother died of natural causes days before Memorial Day back in May. And at least five people were hurt this week after a man stole a school bus in New York City and rammed into multiple cars. The chaos all caught on camera. Sabrina Franza has the details. One lady was in a car and she was about to die. Seconds after this teacher was ripped from her car, coming home from school. <laughs> A school bus rammed through her Honda, caught on camera in video you'll only see on 12. Pulled out the car and then he hit the car again. He hit it so bad that if that lady stood in the car, she would have been dead by now. Screams shook Georgia Avenue. It felt like three hours, but it was just about a few minutes. As the bus hit car after car after car. The last hit, he hit three cars and took him to the other side of the road. A police pursuit ended blocks away. Now a 43 year old man is in custody. We thought it was just a regular accident and then it was just mayhem. Two people taken to the hospital, one of them a police officer for minor injuries. Crushing, banging, screaming. It was pretty scary. Thousands of dollars in damage. This is all that was left of that teacher's car. We're safe. Nobody's got hurt and that's what counts. And that was Sabrina Franza reporting. Time now, just about 640, 68 degrees out. We'll still ahead on GMSA looking for something to do today. How about hitting the ice? Ooh. We'll explain. Plus, some NFL action. We saw the Cowboys play on Thursday. We have the Texans today. We're going to have a full preview coming up. 68 degrees at 640 this morning. That rock and roll marathon and half marathon going to start in the next at 715, so in the next 30 minutes or so. Sarah Spivey will have our Sunday forecast when we come back. Well, we've got it on good authority that the ice rink at Travis Park is awesome. Max was there the yeah. day it opened. Today could be the perfect day to try it out yourself. Our Katie Blake, along with two other familiar faces here at KSAT, put on a pair of skates and went out to the rink to give it a spin. This is the second year for the outdoor ice skating venue. The Ro Rotary Club of San Antonio, along with Centro San Antonio, are expecting more than 50,000 skaters this season to find out if Katie stayed on her feet. <laughs> and get ticket information, just head to ksat.com. All right, I will say, not a skater, but it was a lot of fun out there. How does the ice not melt, Sarah? I mean, it's well, pretty they, warm um, out there today. <laughs> yeah, and they have a whole system underneath the ice rink that keeps it cold. But it's working yeah. hard. By tomorrow evening, though, it should feel a lot more like winter. Oh. So maybe if you wanted to make some plans, that's how you could do it. Okay, outside right now, it's 68 degrees already warmer than our average high this time of year. 70 in Pleasanton, 67 in Del Rio, 64 rather in Kerrville, 64 in Rock Springs, and it's 68 in Gonzales. Speaking of Gonzales, that's where we've got the densest fog right now. Visibility there down to about half a mile, and also in Beeville, visibility down to a quarter of a mile. Lavaca, DeWitt, Gonzales counties, all under a dense fog advisory until 10 o'clock this morning. Elsewhere, things 
winds are not too bad. We do have a limited visibility west uh, out toward Givaldi and Eagle Pass, but around the metro area, we're really not seeing that dense fog out there. There are, however, some areas of patchy drizzle. In the future cast, we are going to see a few peaks of sunshine today, but it's going to be a mainly gray day. And even though we're starting off at 68, the temperatures this afternoon will not be all that much warmer than what we're looking at right now because of the gray skies. However, we will see more sunshine south of San Antonio, so it should be 81 in Pleasanton, 85 for the high in Catula, 82 in Carrizo Springs. Meanwhile, around San Antonio, upper 70s are a good bet for the high temperature, low 70s for areas like Kerrville and Rock Springs. Let's take a look at today's forecast. Again, we'll have south winds at about 5 to 15 miles per hour, a mainly gray day with a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon, 77 for the high. Once the sun sets, it's still going to be warm and muggy. Temperatures will be near 70 degrees by midnight, but changes are coming up to the north. We've got a cold front and a lot of snow in the northern tier of the United States. That front uh, is sitting right there across the Dakotas and temperatures behind that front are in the teens in some spots. So a potent cold front. It is going to drop our temperatures by 20 to 30 degrees uh, tomorrow. Let's take you through the future cast. Now, uh, looking at tomorrow morning, it's going to stay very similar like the last few mornings in the morning hours tomorrow. Muggy, patchy fog, patchy drizzle. That front will be arriving in the mid morning hours after the morning commute. With it, we will have a potential for uh, an isolated shower or storm as a broken line of showers is going to be moving through with that front and then behind it, it's going to become pretty windy. In fact, your Christmas decorations may be knocked around a bit. That front is going to move through shortly after 10 o'clock. Wind gusts of up to about 35 miles per hour. So if you have those Christmas inflatables by the evening hours, frosty might be in your neighbor's yard. So <laughs> be a little careful tomorrow with those gusty winds. Of course, those gusty winds will be ushering in much cooler weather. Uh, Tomorrow morning will be near 70 degrees with patchy fog and drizzle, and then that front will arrive in the mid morning hours. So tomorrow afternoon it'll be windy. It'll be chilly with some isolated rain and temperatures will be in the 50s. So you won't need the jacket in the morning hours, but actually in the afternoon you will. So kind of an upside down day there where it's going to be warmer in the morning than it is in the afternoons. But then as I mentioned, we're going to be seeing temperatures rebound. Now Tuesday is going to be a cool day with highs only in the 60s. But look what happens toward the end of the week. We'll be looking at a high temperature on Friday of 83 degrees. That will be very close to the record high of 85 before our next front arrives on Saturday. And we'll be feeling the uh, effects of that cold front on Saturday. Uh, more so on Sunday than Saturday. So again, up and down that temperature roller coaster, Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Time now, 648, 68 degrees out. We'll still have details on a huge clothing drive taking place today and how you can help. Well, some local children got to enjoy a pop-up winter wonderland. We're going to show you where, but first, look out at the roadways. Look at that. <laughs> There's some, uh, we'll say, controlled chaos downtown because of all the closures. I think Jonathan Coto telling us 60 road closures, but if you have any questions about how to get around downtown because of the marathon traffic, head to KSAT.com. That's right. So let's take a look at these lotto numbers before we head out. Pick three, one, five, two, fireball six, daily four, one, two, six, nine, fireball four. Cash five, 18, 20, 22, 27, 32, lotto Texas, 15, 17, 20, 27, 52, 53, and here we go. Powerball 10, 40, 45, 56, 67. Powerball 2, power play 2. Good luck. I'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. It's just about the holiday season, and it is important to know it is not just about getting gifts, it is about giving gifts. So today, KSAP participating in the 25th annual Gotcha Covered Collection Drive. It benefits the San Antonio Food Bank, Haven for Hope, and the Battered Women and Children Shelter. So from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. today, you can donate new or gently used clothing, personal hygiene products, and non-perishable food items at the collection site at the Park North Shopping Center near 410 and Blanco Road. For a full list of items being requested, just head to KSAT.com. Well, for the sixth year, North Central Baptist Hospital is able to host the annual Winterfest San Antonio. Last year, it was held virtually, so organizers say they're glad to be able to have fun in person again. The event featured carnival rides, live performances, and kids were able to play in 30,000 pounds of snow. Look at that. Santa and Mrs. Claus even showed up 
in a unique, unique way. It's great when AirLife uh, flies Santa out here to meet all the kids and deliver candy and take pictures with, uh, with Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus. It's just a great tradition. Well, the money raised from the event will benefit the Brighton Center, a nonprofit that serves local kids with disabilities and developmental delays. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. All right, we got a lot of NFL action today. We had the championship games yesterday, so a lot of football this weekend. Houston Texans taking on the Colts for the final time this season, and it's in Houston. Remember, the Colts won the first meeting at home 31 to three in week six. And it has not been an easy season for the Texans. In just the last three weeks, they've allowed 12 sacks, five to Miami, two versus the Titans, and then five again last week against the Jets. So kickoff for the Texans and Tyrod Taylor, noon at NRG Stadium. Remember, Cowboys played on Thursday. They have Sunday off. You know, they took on the Saints. They beat the Saints. They beat them big. 27-17 snapped a two-game losing streak. And the man, the myth, the legend, the rookie, Penn State linebacker Micah Parsons put on a show. Five tackles, a sack, tackle for loss, and two hits on the QB. There you go, right there, Taysom Hill. Dallas now 8-4 and four next game, next Sunday, taking on divisional rival Washington football team. And possible big change coming to UIW. There's a report that Washington State is expected to hire UIW football head coach Eric Morris as their offensive coordinator. Incarnate Word hired Morris back in December of 2017, leading the Cardinals to 10-3 record this season and to the second round of the FCS playoffs. So there you go. Time now is 6.54, 68 degrees out. We'll still ahead more on this year's Rock and Roll Marathon and Half Marathon that's taking place this morning in downtown. The moment is here, the 2021 Rock and Roll Running Series right, after so, a two-year I mean, hiatus is here. Runners are pumped up, gearing up here at the starting line of a half marathon and marathon. We'll be following those runners throughout the route. Reporting here at the starting line, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the Michigan school shooting. The hours the suspect's parents were on the run. What their lawyers are now saying as we learn more about the morning of the attack. We'll speak with the Oakland County Sheriff Michael Bouchard. Plus, Chris Cuomo fired from CNN, dismissed after questions over how he helped his brother Andrew Cuomo during a sexual harassment investigation. What he's saying about his dismissal. And in college football, the shocking upsets shaking up the playoff picture. It's it's all ahead here on GMA. Near 70 degrees outside right now. I was going to say something about that Alabama Georgia game. It's not totally shocking. No, not that Alabama shocking. Alabama Alabama winning what? Oh, well, crazy. <laughs> okay, but that's for not, neither here nor there. Okay, <laughs> we've got muggy weather outside right now. Uh, there are some areas of dense fog, mainly out toward Gonzales and the coastal. Plains here in San Antonio, we're really not seeing all that much fog, uh, but there are some areas of uh, patchy fog and drizzle. We're going to see only peaks of sunshine today. Temperatures should climb to near 77 degrees this afternoon. South winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. If you don't like the muggy weather, we get a cold front tomorrow in the mid morning hours. Temperatures will top off at like 10 a.m. at 70 degrees, and then for the remainder of the day tomorrow, we'll be in the 50s uh, tomorrow. Uh, so again, a pretty Potent cold front cooling sounded in the 40s by Tuesday. Highs only in the 60s on Tuesday itself. And then a gradual warm up by Friday. We'll be back in the 80s for the high temperature. Awfully close to a record high temperature too. So impressive. All right, that rock and roll marathon, half marathon starts at 7.15. We'll have live shots from Jonathan Cotto and hopefully Sky 12. There Boom! It is. We got Sky 12 this morning. I love it. So taking over downtown San Antonio, 60 road closures. If you're out and about, say hello. Cheer these runners on. Look They've been waiting people. for this moment for a long time. Hey, we'll see you back here at AM. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A major crash shuts down part of the highway overnight. How this crash happened and your other top stories, that's still ahead. Well, that's taking a live look out at the Alamo City. 68 degrees now. We know a lot of runners taking the San Antonio streets. A lot of road closures to tell you about. And obviously, good luck to all those runners. But for now, good morning, 8 o'clock this Sunday, December 5th. Do you want to tell the viewers what you were yelling at the runners? Well, they run right by the right. station. A lot of the streets around our station are closed. Mm -hmm. So we decided to cheer them on. Right. 
I was just letting them know they're going fast mm -hmm. and to think about all the carbs and calories they are just burning. Just the motivation we all <laughs> needed to start the morning. If someone ever yelled that at me while I was mm -hmm. running, I think I would just be like, yes, that's right. I'm, I'm going in so faster. much pain right now. <laughs> Sarah, you went up to the roof to watch some of the runners. I did. It was impressive to see how many people are participating in the Humana Rock and Roll Half and Full Marathon. Outside, though, there it is very humid, as we can attest to. Uh, now, the fog is really not bad around San Antonio, but in some of the more rural areas, we do have visibility down to a quarter of a mile in Gonzales. It's fairly dense in Carn City and in Lavaca County as well. Uh, but out to the west, you can see in Hondo visibility down to two and a half miles, less than two mile visibility in Uvalde. And it's a warm and humid start to the day. Much like the last few days, we are starting off near 70 degrees this morning with high humidity. It's 63 in Lotus, 67 in Bulverde, 65 in Comfort, 70 already in Pleasanton and down at Stinson, 67 in Hondo. Today's forecast calls for warm and muggy conditions all day long. It's going to stay fairly gray, really only a few peaks of sunshine into the afternoon and a high temperature in the upper 70s. If you're tired of this weather, there is a front on the way that front will be moving through tomorrow and it'll cool things down fairly significantly for us, at least temporarily. I'll have a look ahead coming up in just a bit. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. Well, new this morning, a shooting at the Kickapoo Lucky Eagle Casino in Eagle Pass overnight. The Dimmick County Sheriff's Office responded to the scene shortly after midnight. They received word that the suspect may be driving towards Carrizo Springs, and they were able to stop him about an hour later near FM 2644. It's unclear if anyone was injured right now. This is all the information we know as this investigation continues. We'll bring you any new information and, and get it on air and online. Well, new this morning, investigators tell us one man dead after crashing his vehicle into a guardrail overnight. So take a look. This all happened on 1604 near Nacogdoches just before 2.30 a.m. The driver dying from his injuries. Police do say speed was a factor in the crash. The southbound lanes of 1604 closed for several hours while the scene was cleared. A party at a northwest side apartment complex takes a violent turn after one person was stabbed. This happened around 345 this morning at a complex on Babcock Road near UTSA Boulevard. Police say a group of guys showed up and tried to get into the party, but a man at the door wouldn't let them in. The men allegedly got angry and one of them pulled out a knife and stabbed the man at the door. According to police, he was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. The group of men took off from the scene but were stopped by police down the road. Several people were detained and charges are still pending. Well, happening right now, something we've been talking about all weekend long, rock and roll marathon and half marathon going on right outside the station. That's right. They're all over downtown. I know about 60 roads are closed, but Jonathan Cotto, he is live. I think you're following a group of runners. Jonathan, what are you seeing out there? Hey, Sarah. Well, I'm here not too far away from the station in downtown off of Austin. We are following the runners closely on this route. And let me tell you, it's been nothing short of impressive. The runner we have in the lead right now is JLS, initials JLS Marin from Mexico, bib number 1302. He is running an incredible pace, an incredible mile. Let me tell you, it's four minutes and 54 seconds, the pace that he is at. A significant distance between him and the rest of the runners right now. But let me talk to you a little bit about the route out here. We know the course is uh, sneaking up to the Pearl area in Brackenridge Park before returning downtown via Austin Street, and that's where we're at right now. The split for the half marathon is at Nolan and Olive Streets near Dignity Park, and from there the half marathoners will make their way back to Hemisphere, while full marathoners will continue through the east side. Now, here at the distance, we just passed a stretch of mariachis playing music for the runners as they finish their course. There at the distance, you can see Marie making uh, significant grounds here. Crowds of supporters all along this path. It's just been amazing this morning. Max, we're going to continue to follow this path, this route, all the way up until the finish line. We'll update you on who's coming up first and see if Marin can hold that lead. Max, Sarah. Hey, Jonathan, just to give clarity to our viewers, um, you guys are in front of that lead runner, correct? That runner is behind the men That's riding right. the bikes. Okay. I think we saw him for a split right. second earlier. 
trying to see if we, there That's he right. is. As a okay. matter of fact, wow. if, if we can hold that fast. shot, he is coming under that bridge right now. He is holding a very fast pace. You can see him there at the distance. We are following him in a truck that has a, a, a timetable here keeping track for him. And of course, the cyclists here you see at the distance with the green vest, they are part of the bike patrol, just making sure that everything is squared away and safe for the runner. But you can see him there at a distance. There is nobody behind him. Fast pace, definitely a fast pace, Maxara. All right, John Thank you, John. No one behind him at all. No. Wow, way to so go. Fast. All right, so it is one of the largest breast cancer symposiums in the world and is happening right here in San Antonio. It is also where the latest approved treatments are first discussed with the best of the best researchers and physicians in their field. The 2021 San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium happening this Tuesday, December 7th. So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Dr. Virginia Kaklamani, the breast breast oncologist at UT Health San Antonio MD Anderson Cancer Center. Good morning, doctor. Thank you so much for making time for us this morning. Thank you so much. I was planning on running the marathon, but I had to be here. So unfortunately, oh. I wasn't able to. <laughs> well, thank, thank you. you. So for those who don't know, what is the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium and what do you guys hope to accomplish this year? It is the largest symposium in the world. More than 8,000 people. Last, last year, we had 9,200 individuals logging on because it was virtual, uh, looking at anything related to breast cancer, surgery, radiation, uh, new treatments, uh, basic science. Uh, and it is held in San Antonio. This is the 44th year that we're doing it in San Antonio. All right, doctor, for all of the women watching this morning, what are those screening guidelines for breast cancer? Is there an age to start going to get a mammogram and how often? So the screening guidelines I usually refer to as the American Cancer Society guidelines that say we start at the age of 45 with yearly um, uh, mammograms until 55. If you want to start at the age of 40, you can. And I usually tell my uh, my patients to talk to their relatives about starting at 40. After 55, either every year, every two year mammograms. Um, and, and it's usually just mammograms. Now, this is, these are guidelines just for the patients that have a, a normal risk of developing breast cancer. If you have a high risk, the guidelines are different. And the issue has been in the past year or two with the pandemic that women haven't come in for mammograms. And now we're seeing women coming in with larger breast cancers. And the larger the breast cancer, the worse the prognosis. So, so please, please do not forget your mammograms. What are some of the newest treatments and newest advancements for patients who are diagnosed with breast cancer? So what we're focusing more on is what we call targeted therapies. And targeted therapies are where they target the cancer and not the whole body. We've relied on chemotherapy way too much. And chemotherapy kills every fast-growing cell in the body, which is why women lose their hair. They have other side effects. But with the targeted therapies, those therapies are smart enough to just go to the cancer and therefore cause fewer symptoms and also work best. And the, most, the newest ones are the ones that uh, focus on, on strengthening our immune system to kill the cancer cells. Well, you talked about it earlier, getting a mammogram is one of the best ways to prevent breast cancer. Um, I know there's been other things like knowing your history or there's even some people that get their the genes detected to see if they have the breast cancer gene. Is, is that actually working? Is that a way to prevent breast cancer? This is really extremely important. And that's why we need to be our own best advocate by telling our physicians what our family history is. If a woman has a pretty strong family history of breast cancer, or ovarian cancer, then she's eligible for genetic testing. And that testing will tell us whether she carries a gene that's changed a little bit that might predispose her to getting breast cancer. And with that, we can offer prevention, such as having bilateral mastectomies for certain women or medications that we can give them to help prevent breast cancer. All right, Dr. Kakamani, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Anyone who missed any part of the interview, we're going to have the full thing on ksat.com throughout the morning. Thank you. Thank you. Well, if you're going to be driving on the city's south side today, be aware that CPS Energy crews will be doing some construction on Loop 410 west of Roosevelt Avenue. Crews will occasionally have the road closed to work on equipment and install overhead lines over the highway. CPS will be working on both sides of Loop 410 between 7 a.m. and 2 p.m. The highway and frontage roads will have periodic stops during that time. All right, time now, 8, 10, 68 degrees out. High school football playoffs continued yesterday, Max. We had so much football this weekend, and yet still not enough. Two local teams, we got highlights, scores, and all the best. Look at that. We made a miss right in the open field. You love it. We're going to have it all.
Coming up next, the plumber who found a big clue in the unsolved theft case involving Joel Osteen's Houston church is looking for a reward, but it doesn't seem like he'll get one. We'll explain why after the break. It solved their case, but I solved very key important clues as to what could or may have happened there. Well, that was the plumber who found a large sum of money hidden inside the walls of Joel Osteen's Lakewood Church in Houston. He is speaking out. He wanted to remain anonymous, but he clearly believes he deserves some kind of reward for finding a big clue in a seven year old unsolved case. Houston police say the hundreds of envelopes of cash and checks the plumber found could be linked to a robbery case back from 2014 where $600,000 was stolen from the church. Mm. Crime Stoppers was offered a reward when the case was first announced, but it doesn't look like the plumber will qualify for the reward because of how he found the money and the expired statue limitations on this theft case. Thoughts? Do you think you should get a reward? I mean, the church could give him a little bit they of They could, even though the statute of limitations has run out, the church could say, hey, thank you hey, for our money back. Thanks a lot. And hey, you know, I'm not a runner, so are you guys runners? Would you be happy with this weather? I'd like to run, <laughs> okay. but um, not when no. it's this humid. Uh -huh. I don't like running, period, so I can imagine the humidity. Oh my goodness. Hey, but the runners we saw running by our station, mm -hmm. they were doing, they were moving fast. Yeah. Really fast. Uh, and it's impressive every year how many people participate in this half and full marathon. Again, they'll have to deal with the humidity out there, as will we all. It is humid, it is gray outside, and temperatures are close to 70 degrees. Now, we're not really seeing any fog around the San Antonio metro area, but elsewhere, fog is fairly thick, and we'll get to that in just a bit. For now, again, very warm this morning. To put this into perspective, our average high time, our average high temperature this time of year is 67. So we're already warmer than that, and we're just starting the day. It's already 70 degrees in Castroville, 71 at Stinson, 65 in Comfort, 64 in Kerrville, 70 in Pleasanton, 68 in Gonzales. Speaking of Gonzales, that's where we've got the dense fog right now across the coastal plains and off to the west of San Antonio, visibility is down to two miles in Hondo and down to less than two in Yavaldi. You can see that visibility is pretty dense in Beeville and Carnes uh, County and in DeWitt County. Uh, and there are some areas of limited visibility out toward Del Rio as well. Now today, it's gonna be hard for us to see much sunshine. We're gonna be fairly socked into cloud cover, but I do think that a lot like yesterday in the afternoon, we will have a few peaks of sunshine. We'll still have plenty of time to warm up though. Uh, and in fact, by noon, will be at 74, 77 for the afternoon high, south winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. I don't know about you, but I could use a little bit of something to shake up the forecast because these temperatures in the 80s that we're going to see in Pleasanton, Catula, Carrizo Springs, definitely on the warm side. We've got a front well to the north of us right now. In fact, it's working its way across the northern tier of the United States. You can see all the snowfall extending from the upper Rockies all the way out to the Great Lakes. There's that low pressure system with the associated cold front. You can see that the nation is fairly divided between uh, the warm uh, southern states and these cold temperatures up in the northern tier. It's 10 degrees in Cut Bank right now. Now we're not going to get to freezing in San Antonio, but we are going to see temperatures fall by up to 30 degrees by Tuesday morning. So let me take you through the future cast for us. Tomorrow is going to start off a lot like the last few days where tomorrow morning we'll have uh, muggy conditions with some areas of drizzle. And warm uh, temperatures too will be near in the uh, mid to upper 60s tomorrow morning. But as that front moves through in the mid morning hours, we'll see a broken line of thunder showers moving through. It's not a good chance to see some rain in San Antonio, only a 20% chance, but there is that chance right when the front is moving through in the mid morning hours. Behind that front, it's going to get very windy for the second part of tomorrow. Uh, we'll be seeing wind gusts of up to about 35 miles per hour. That'll 
that'll bring in that cold air from the north. Temperatures will fall throughout the second part of the day Monday, and we'll have an opportunity to see an isolated shower tomorrow after that front moves through. But by Tuesday morning, we'll be in the 40s for the morning lows, so a very significant temperature drop tomorrow uh, for us. Definitely noticeable starting off with that morning fog. We'll actually see our high temperature close to 10 o'clock in the morning and then in the 50s for the rest of the day. So no jacket for the first part of the day, but you'll want to bring that jacket with you before you head out to work or before the kids head out to school. North winds gusting up to 35 miles per hour behind that front, but just as quickly as we cool down, We'll warm back up after a cool day Tuesday. We'll be back in the 70s Wednesday and Thursday. Highs on Friday will be close to the record of 85 for that day. And our next cold front will arrive Saturday. The much colder air arriving Sunday. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 819, 68 degrees out. Tough loss for the Cardinals, Max. Ooh, well, they were in the FCA play FCS playoffs. They made it to the second round, so nothing but respect for UIW. We're going to mm -hmm. have the highlights right after the break. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, one, five, two, fireball six, daily four, one, two, six, nine, fireball four. And your cash five, 18, 20, 22, 27, 32. Lotto Texas, 15, 17, 20, 27, 52, 53. Powerball 10, 40, 45, 56, 67. Powerball 2, Power Play 2. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning and a welcome back. And nothing but respect for our local football teams, UIW. They finished their season yesterday. Second round of the FCS playoffs. Incarnate Ward at number one, Sam Houston State. Fourth quarter, Cardinals down seven. Quarterback Cameron Ward. He hit Trevor Beggy, found the end zone, 62 yards. The game was tied at 42. The Bearcats answered back on the next drive, two yard. We just saw the quarterback keeper, 49-42, Sam Houston. Next drive, fourth and goal, the Cardinals from four. Ward tackled at the one, and then here you go again. Look at that, incarnate word. Ugh, falls just short, 49-42. to They did finish 10-3 and on the season. Still, like we said, nothing but respect. Very impressive season. And here we go. Talking about other Texas teams, number nine, Baylor. Big 12 champs. They won a huge game yesterday. A crazy end of the game. If you didn't catch it, Baylor, goal line stand at the one-yard line. It was an amazing feat. They beat Oklahoma State 21-16. to There is never enough football to watch or to talk about. High school playoffs continued yesterday afternoon. Fourth round of the Class 6A Division I playoffs. Undefeated Brennan taking on Lake Travis. Lake Travis controlled the majority of the first half. Hand off to the running back, Derek Johnson, running right through the Bears defense, breaking four tackles. Enzo, 32-yard touchdown. Lake Travis led it 21-3 at halftime. First quarter, Brennan still fighting. Quarterback Ashton DeBose dodging the rush. Hold up. Oh, look at that, number six. Crafty. When you make a man miss in an open field, it's great. Twin brother. All right. Stayed on his feet. 58-yard score. Not enough to complete a comeback, though. The Bears fall in the state quarterfinals, 42-17. to Not the only local team playing yesterday. Fredericksburg season also coming to an end. A loss to Austin Johnson, 45-25. If you want to see the scores, the highlights, anything you do know, BGC section, KSAT.com, now down to three area schools still in the playoffs, Cuero, Shiner, and Fall City. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Lover. Like I said, never enough football. It continues today. NFL action. We saw the Cowboys win huge Thursday night. We got the Texans today hosting the Indianapolis Colts. Noon, NRG Stadium. It's been a, a tumultuous season for the Texans. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> Also, huge shout to the Spurs last night. Big win over Golden State. They're going to continue. Next up, they play the Phoenix Suns. We're going to have highlights in the next half hour. We also have a couple of updates from some top stories we've been following. We'll have that after the break. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, December 5th. The Rock and Roll Marathon and Half Marathon is officially kicked off at 7.15. And shout out to our assistant news director, Mario. Oh, yeah. He ran in the station. And <laughs> he then he was started like, it here. He started. He's like, all right, I'm starting. So good luck. I hope you're doing well out there, Mario. Oh, and Stephanie. Mm -hmm. she's Stephanie Serna, she's actually running. She's running the half, I believe. I think so. Half of the half. 
Or did she run yesterday? She was, she's running the half marathon. Yeah, she's oh, running she the half marathon. she was running marathon. yesterday, too, and she's out there now. Wow, Wait, double duty. Wait, she ran duty. yesterday, too? Yeah, a lot of people do that as, like, a warm-up. Oh, I'm, a... I'm not a lot of people like that, Sarah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look outside with uh, live cam. We've got some cloud cover out there right now. It is muggy, uh, and that is an understatement. It's, it's just plain old humid outside. Uh, dew points are in the mid to upper 60s. It is near 70 degrees, completely cloudy out there. And in some places there is some fog, especially across our coastal communities uh, and off to the east in Gonzales. Visibility is down to a half a mile. It's down a half a mile in Beeville as well, as low as a mile and a half in Uvalde and as low as two and a half miles in both Kerrville and in Hondo. Uh, so around the metro area, though, we're not really seeing uh, any fog. Uh, things are just cloudy and humid and we're going to go up and down the temperature roller coaster over the next few days. I literally built a roller coaster for this, so I'm pretty, pretty proud of it. All right, today we'll be near 77 or 78 degrees, and then tomorrow a front is going to move through. During the afternoon tomorrow, we'll actually be in the 50s, and by the start of Tuesday, we're going to be at 45 degrees in the morning. Then guess what? We got to go back up that temperature roller coaster. By Friday, we will be in the low 80s for the high temperatures. That's close to the record. So we've got a lot to unpack in the forecast. Obviously, I'll have more details on that front, how windy it'll get, and if we can expect any rain coming up in a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, we now know the name of the man killed in a motorcycle crash from this past Wednesday. 25-year-old Saul Eduardo Mendoza. Now, we know the crash happened near TPC Parkway in the far north Bear County. Uh, the sheriff's office says Mendoza lost control of his bike, crashed, falling off the motorcycle. They say he was not wearing a helmet. Another top story we were following this morning, a man killed at a car wash near Ingram Park Mall. This all happened around 9 last night at the corner of Northwestern Drive and Worsbach Road. Police still trying to figure out what exactly caused the shooting, what led up to it. Uh, they have arrested the man they believe fired the shot. He's identified as 18-year-old Cesar Martinez, and he is being charged with murder. The man killed has not yet been identified. A driver killed in a crash and his truck went up in flames. This happened on the far northwest side yesterday evening. This happened on Culebra Road near Roft Road. That's outside Loop 1604. Witnesses told police the man's truck went over the center median and he lost control, hit a guardrail and went into a creek before the truck burst into flames. Officer tried to get the man out of the truck, but were unable to. The driver has not been identified yet. And we are still waiting to learn more information about a body found in a far south southwest Bear County yesterday afternoon. Sheriff Javier Salazar says a rancher was surveying his property. He found a foul odor. Now, when he went to check out what it was, it appeared to be human remains. Authorities called to the scene. They began their investigation still very early on, but the sheriff says based on clothing, the remains could be that of a man who passed away sometime during the summer. He does believe foul play was involved, but investigators still trying to piece everything together, trying to figure out what exactly happened. In your morning headlines, the parents of the 15-year-old boy accused in the Michigan high school shooting are in separate cells this morning in the same Michigan jail as their 15-year-old son. The mother and father are now facing involuntary manslaughter charges. Police say now they were found hiding. The parents found hiding in a vacant building in Detroit after having withdrawn $4,000 from an ATM. The judge imposing half million dollar bonds for both parents. Trevor Alt has the latest. This morning, James and Jennifer Crumbly, the parents of the accused Oxford High School shooter, each being held on half a million dollars bond. Good afternoon, please be seated. The couple pleading not guilty to four counts each of involuntary manslaughter. Jennifer Crumbly fighting tears. How are you pleading to count for? Not guilty. James Crumbly shaking his head at the prosecutor's accusations. Your Honor, this is a very serious, horrible, terrible murder and shooting and it has affected the entire community and these two individuals could have stopped it prosecutors called the crumblies a flight risk after the couple missed their arraignment friday saying they withdrew four thousand dollars from an atm and were arrested after an hours-long manhunt led to them being found in an empty detroit warehouse but the couple's attorneys insist they weren't trying to flee but our clients were absolutely going to turn themselves in. It was just a matter of logistics. They're now in the same jail as their son, who's pleaded not guilty to four counts of first degree murder and terrorism, but the family is not together.
No talking, no communication. They're all three in isolation. Prosecutors say James Crumbly had his son with him as he bought the handgun on Black Friday that was later used in the rampage that left four students dead. And the school now addressing criticism of its actions leading up to the shooting. The prosecution alleges that morning a teacher reported a picture the suspect drew of a person appearing shot with disturbing phrases like blood everywhere and the world is dead. The Crumblies were called in, but their son was sent back to class. The superintendent now says in a statement, the suspect claimed the drawing was part of a video game he was designing and informed counselors that he planned to pursue video game design as a career. Then while waiting for his parents, the teen asked for his science homework and at no time did counselors believe the student might harm others based on his behavior, responses and demeanor, which appeared calm. And the superintendent says the morning of the shooting, the Crumbleys flatly refused to take their son home. And given the fact that he had no prior disciplinary infractions, the school felt it was better to send him back to class than to send him home to an empty house. But having said that, the superintendent is now calling for a third party investigation into the events that led up to this shooting. Trevor Alt, ABC News, Oakland County, Michigan. Now to the coronavirus cases rising in the U.S., the highest daily average in two months. The U.S. now averaging more than 96,000 new cases a day. This, as scientists in South Africa say, the Omicron variant is spreading twice as fast as the Delta variant. Despite the many unknowns about Omicron, health officials stress the best defense against it and other variants is still vaccination. There are still no confirmed Omicron cases in Texas. President Joe Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin set to meet in a video conference setting on Tuesday. A very important meeting because this all comes as tensions escalate between the United States and Russia over the matter of Russian troops building up on the Ukrainian border. Nearly 100,000 Russian soldiers are said to be on the border of Ukraine. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said President Biden will express U.S. concerns about Russian military activities on the Ukrainian border and will reaffirm U.S. support for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine. CNN has fired anchor Chris Cuomo. This comes after details emerged about how Chris Cuomo tried to help his brother, former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, during allegations of sexual harassment surfaced. The network suspended Chris Cuomo earlier in the week to investigate his involvement with his brother's defense. CNN hired a law firm to review that case. The firm recommended Chris Cuomo's termination. Cuomo issued a statement on Twitter calling the decision disappointing. Even with the firing, CNN said it will continue to investigate his conduct. Well, back here at home happening right now, the Humana Rock and Roll Running Series happening. We have the marathon and the half marathon, and we had some runners already finish the half marathon. Whoa, that's, that's <laughs> too fast for me, but hey, good luck to them. Hey, but Jonathan, okay, so earlier, Jonathan Kotal, you were live on the back of the truck following those lead runners. Where are you now? That's right, Sarah. Well, right now I'm located just in front of the finish line where those runners are coming through. Very excited to finish with excellent times. Now, the runner we were following closely won this half marathon is standing right next to me along with second and third place. Muchachos, muy buenos días. ¿Cómo se encuentran este día? Eh, hola, mucho gusto. Este, pues me siento bien. Soy feliz por un segundo lugar, pero la ruta algo pesada. Now, th these fellows are joining us from Mexico City. He just said that he is happy that he was able to complete uh, the, mar the half marathon, coming in at second here. Marin, you took first place. Tomás el primer lugar en este medio maratón. ¿Cómo te sientes el día de hoy? How do you feel today? Hola, buenos días. Este, pues me siento muy contento, feliz de haber hecho más que nada una marca este, bien, a pesar de la ruta, que estuvo un poco pesada. Este, hice una buena marca. Now, he just shared with us that the route was a little tough, uh, very extensive and uh, challenging, but he's very, very happy with the outcome and the timing of his results. Now, Marin, uh, we tuvimos la oportunidad de verte durante la ruta. Mantuviste un, un, un tiempo muy rápido, una, un paso muy rápido. You maintained a very fast pace, una milla de casi cinco minutos, uh, a mile at under five minutes. Um, Hablame un poquito de entrenamiento. Talk to me a little bit about the training behind this, this half marathon. 
Sí, pues en, en realidad este, yo quería correr lo más rápido posible, este, acercarme a mi marca personal que es una hora 1, 11 segundos en el Mundial de Guinea, Polonia. Pero pues viendo la ruta, conforme fui avanzando, vi que tenía bastantes subidas y retornos y pues ahora sí que la mentalidad fue mantener lo mejor que pudiera al paso y pues ahora sí que los entrenamientos vamos bien, vamos este, trabajando con mis compañeros de Gondi MX, este, haciendo buen equipo y pues para las siguientes competencias. Muchísimas gracias, Marín. Tercer lugar, ¿cómo te sientes? ¿Cómo te sientes? Me siento bien, I feel very happy to be here in, in San Antonio, uh, a very hilly crew, of course, but uh, this is a test for us uh, in preparation to, for, for the Houston Marathon in, in, in like uh, six weeks. Muchachos, muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much for joining us this morning and congratulations, felicitaciones. There you have it, Max and Sarah from Mexico City, the top three finishers here in this half marathon this morning, finishing it with some impressive times. Send it back to you, Max and Sarah. Thank you, Jonathan. That was fantastic. I love the one of the runners behind him grabbing all the snacks. Yeah, he's just like, I'm just happy to have Look, snacks. After 13 plus miles, I would need snacks yes, too. Burning lots of carbs. Time now 841, 69 degrees out. Go Spurs, go! What a night for the Spurs and all of the Spurs fans. We're gonna have the highlights. Big win over the Warriors. Welcome back. The last remaining member of World War II's Band of Brothers has passed away. Army Colonel Edward James, the last surviving officer of the historic World War II Parachute Infantry Regiment, the U.S. Army known as Easy Company. He died Friday at the age of 99 years old. According to his obituary, now James made his first combat jump into Normandy on D-Day as part of Operation Overlord. After the war, James worked as an expert on Middle East affairs with the National Security Agency, later served in the U.S. Army Reserve Division, and retired as a colonel. A graveside service will be held at Forest Lawn Cemetery in Virginia later today. Thank you for your service. Taking a look outside with live cam, 69 degrees at 845 this morning. Sarah, that kind of fog or... A haze in the in the sky has kind of just been lingering all morning long. Yeah, and over the last few days too, it has just been humid over the last several days, especially for the start of December. You know, we usually see a high temperature right around 67 this time of year. We're at 69 degrees. We're already warmer than our high temperature uh, usually is. 69 in New Braunfels, 66 in Uvalde, 68 in Del Rio, 66 in Beeville, and 71 in Catula. Already 71 in Catula. Visibility is lower in many places, not necessarily around the metro area, but as you can see, visibility down to a mile and a half in Pleasanton, down to two miles in Uvalde and two in Honda. This is, of course, because of some areas of patchy fog out there. Visibility down to a mile in Gonzales and even down to four miles in Del Rio. Take a look at the future cast. It's going to be difficult for us to see much sunshine today. We will probably see a few peaks of sunshine here and there, but all in all, our Thermometers should only rise by about 10 degrees in many places. We'll be looking at a high temperature in the upper 70s around San Antonio, but the low 80s in Pleasanton, 82 in Carrizo Springs, and upper 70s for Del Rio. It's going to stay fairly cloudy in the Hill Country, too, and Kerrville should only be 73 degrees for the high. Now, that is still warmer than seasonably average, and it's going to be muggy all day long. So today's forecast calls for, again, gray skies, a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon, south winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour and when the sun sets at 535 we're not going to need a jacket at all. It's going to be still near 70 degrees by midnight, but we are expecting a change tomorrow. Now, a cold front, which is currently in the northern tier of the United States, is going to be moving through. Look at all the snow across the northern tier of the United States from Montana all the way up to the Great Lakes. There's our cold front right now, and temperatures are impressively cold behind this front. It's 29 degrees in Casper, Wyoming, 10 in Cutbank, Montana. Uh, now, we are not going to get that cold, but this front is going to shape up to move through around the mid morning hours uh, tomorrow. Now, until then, though, the morning commute tomorrow will be a lot like the last few days where it's just going to be muggy and warm and there will be some areas of patchy drizzle and fog. But that front will move through in the mid morning. With it will come a broken 
keyword there broken line of thunder showers, not a big washout by any means. And then behind that front, it's going to get very windy. So if you have any Christmas decorations, especially Christmas inflatables, know that once that front moves through, winds could gust up to about 35 miles per hour. Frosty there, he might be in the neighbor's yard if you don't tie him down uh, fair, <laughs> fairly securely. Uh, so again, that those gusty winds are going to bring in some much cooler air. In the morning, you won't notice much of a difference. Fog and drizzle near 70 degrees. But mid morning hours, that front moves through. So in the afternoon, it's going to be windy, it's going to be chilly, and there could still be some isolated rain in spots as well. Temperatures will be in the 50s with a stout wind from the north. So you're definitely going to need that jacket tomorrow afternoon. So a bit of an upside down day where the warmer part of the day is going to be in the morning, and then it'll be chilly in the afternoons. Looking at the seven day forecast, it'll stay cool through Tuesday as temperatures will be in the 60s. But by Friday, we're going to be back up into the low 80s for the high temperature. That's going to challenge Friday's record of 85. Then a front will move through on Saturday. That'll cool us back down, especially by Sunday. Max. That's Bobby. Thank you so much. Huge win for the Spurs. Go Spurs go. Taking down Golden State Warriors last night. Let's take a look at the highlights. First quarter, Derek White steals the pass. Then wait for it. Could he go coast to coast? That's an and one, ladies and gentlemen. Spurs led 13-9. Cue up Lonnie Walker the fourth from distance. And the Spurs go up 17. They led 36-21 after one. And 67-58 at halftime. Third quarter closing seconds. I mean, come on. Derek White getting everyone hyped up. It was really good. I mean, just nothing but love. Anyway. Steph Curry had basically a shot from almost half court. 99-88 San Antonio after three. The Spurs hold on fourth quarter less than two minutes ago. The Spurs were down. Derek White making a clutch triple. 107-106 San Antonio. DeJounte, the layup, 33 seconds. The Spurs do it. They beat Golden State 112-107. to They've been doing the same things for years and years, so... You know, it's, it's definitely a, a great learning lesson for us, uh, win or lose, you know, but we came out with the win. And as you've seen, we was playing really well, uh, was up, but we knew, you know, with Golden State, your lead's not safe. Uh, that's a team that don't quit. So we had to keep our uh, composure and just fight, fight. And uh, I think that's what we did. And uh, we got the win. Got to be relentless. Next up, Spurs closing out their three-game road trip tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. Phoenix Suns, our director of Flowers, told us, you know, you haven't talked about Jakob Poto in a long time. He had an awesome block on Steph Curry last night. Just Oh, I saw you uh, tweeted that out. Yeah, yeah, I put it on the Instagram story. Yeah. There you go. Shameless plug to my Instagram. <laughs> time now, 851, 69 degrees out. We'll be right back. In the news you need to know before you go, a man killed after crashing his car into a guardrail overnight. It happened on Loop 1604 near Nacogdoches just before 2.30 this morning. The driver died from his injuries. Police say speed was a factor in this crash. And a shooting at the Kickapoo Lucky Eagle Casino in Eagle Pass overnight. The Dimmick County Sheriff's Office responded to the scene shortly after midnight. They received word that the suspect may have been driving towards Carrizo Springs. They were able to stop him about an hour later near FM 2644. Still unclear if anyone was injured in the gunfire right now. This is all the information we have. The investigation still ongoing. We just got the pollen count in and it looks like our endless days of humidity have come back to bite us. Molds <laughs> have climbed. They are now moderate, close to a thousand. Uh, and with the winds picking up tomorrow from the cold front, we may have a few more allergens in there tomorrow. Now looking at today's forecast, 77 for the high, but will be cloudy for most of the day. A few peaks of sunshine. That front arrives tomorrow mid morning. Temperatures will fall throughout the afternoon tomorrow. So bring the jacket with you, even though you won't need it when you step out of the door early. You will by the end of the day. 45 for Tuesday morning, 63 for the high on Tuesday, then a warm up to near 83 degrees on Ooh. Friday. That could be close to a record, guys. All right, and we've predominantly been higher than average locally, right? Yes, especially for December. Definitely. Right. Especially for all those runners this morning. Hey, good luck to mm -hmm. all the runners. I know you're probably in the race right now. Yeah, they are. <laughs> we, we're supporting you. <laughs> Have a great Sunday. Have a good Sunday.